Okay, so I wanted to do an unboxing video for this Planet X purchase, which is a London Road Titanium Special Edition. I'm doing this because when I was looking to buy this online, I could find out very little information other than that that was provided by Planet X. And through a little bit of searching, I did find a photograph of someone who bought one back in June of 2021. Uh, other than that, I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was potentially a road bike and a gravel bike. So, here goes. So, as per usual, this is not the first bike that I bought from Planet X and they're all incredibly well packaged. Excuse me, my poor camera work, but I'm not someone who does this for a living. But yeah, definitely well packaged. Get it out of the box. Okay, forgive the orange trousers and the mess in here. Right, let's get this out. Quite the beast. In one hit out of the box. And there we go. Standing up quite nice. Give me a minute. We get rid of the box and we can start to build it up. Now we're good to go. All right, the box. I am a side tech mechanic. Believe it or not, save all that plastic for recycling later because we're good like that. The orange trousers. I live in the mountains of North Wales and it's quite a lot. So it's not a pretentious thing. Actually, use these orange trousers. Now this bike was £1,799. However, Planet X had a number of them already built. So I was able to buy it for £1,399 for a titanium hydraulic disc brake bike. For me, I would struggle to buy an aluminium brake bike of this build, group set, for that sort of money. Nice wheels. Look on Racing 900s. Nice and smooth, centre lock as well, which is good. Now onto the main bit. Let's see what we got here. Seat and a seat post. That's not good, is it? Seat and a seat post. Nice aluminium seat post. Find those scissors. Looks a reasonable saddle, but. I've only got one saddle that I use on gravel or off-road bikes and that is the Wilderness Trail Bike SST-X from the 90s. Still buy them, new on stock. And to me they're the ultimate saddle. Okay. You might find other saddles better, but personal choice at the end of the day, aren't they? Alright, there's the handlebars. What I'm going to do is get all this crap off and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so there we go. So out of the box, clip the bars on loosely, put the seat in and what I'm going to do now is put it onto the work stand and then give you a bit more of a detailed view of how the frame is, what I can see from the construction and if it's any good, but it looks very good so far. Okay, so here we have a very nice London Road TI. Excuse the mess in the background. Uh, a very nice looking bike, what I say myself. And I've got to add that I'm nothing to do with Planet X. I'm just a customer. But uh, yeah, very nice looking frame. Uh, 
nice quality welding on there that I can see. I've got other titanium bikes and I'd say that was equivalent to any other Chinese or Taiwan titanium in terms of the stack of coins welding. The advantage to this one and what drew me to it was the fact that it has got a gusseted head tube. I have seen titanium bikes in the past that have folded down tube where that gusset is, so that should prevent that. Now this is intended to be used as a commuter bike, Planet XC. So about that, little interruption with the postman. <laughs> now uh, Planet XC, this is the London Road commuter, uh, blah, blah, blah type bike. I bought it for a winter bike, because I can put mud guards on it. And also, uh, I will put wider tyres on it and I can use it on some of the gravel trails here. Now, I've already got a gravel bike, or two, maybe. And uh, I've got this theory that if you've got to put tyres wider than 38 millimeter knobblies, gravel tyres on your bike, then you should really be riding a cross-country mountain bike. That sounds very controversial, doesn't it? But that's just my view. I'm sure you've got your own. And from what I can see here with this bike, it does have some reasonable tyre clearance. So these are 32 millimetre tyres on there now. All right, I'm gonna comfortably get a 38 mil tyre on that with a bit of a tread pattern to it. Uh, very nice. Right, we shall run down all the components now. Okay, we'll run through the components that are on this bike. Uh, I've just moved it around on the stand as you can probably see. I've got to say it was a lot lighter than I thought it would be. It was described as a 10.1 kilo bike which is a bit of a bruiser. I've got a cross country mountain bike that weighs less than that but it didn't feel that heavy I've got to be honest. So walking through it, tram rival, <laughs> tram rival hydraulic brakes, full Monty brakes. If I want to buy those at the minute, I've got to pay about £250 per lead one caliper, so that's quite a good value. Tram rotors, through axles, and these fulcrum wheels. I do love fulcrum wheels. Always have done. But then again, I love Campagnola stuff as well, so there you go. Fulcrum Racing 900. Panaracer tour tyres, whatever, they'll be coming off. Nice carbon fork, don't know if it's coal, a full carbon fork or just with a steerer. Got the for the mud guard, because this will be having mud guards on it. Straight head tube, which is quite nice. Not sure I like the shaped head tube in a uh, titanium bike. Planet X is Selkoff, their own stuff, bars and stem. They look alright. On this build, they don't come with the gravel bar type bikes, but I'm not bothered about that. Seat post and stem, very, very boring. Lovely frame though. Just the two bottle bosses. Uh, down tube and seat tube. The SRAM Rival 42 chain set. This does take a uh, BSA bottom bracket as well, which is good news. Bog standard chain, proper through axles. I did notice on, <coughs> excuse me, the Planet X Tempest V3, kind of had a bit of a pseudo through axle on it, which I'm never keen on, because these things do take a lot of abuse. And titanium bikes, the metal is so hard in them, when you bond alloy or screw alloy, I don't know, I just don't like it. it they can slip. I've had sl a slippage on dropouts on bikes before. Van Nicholas, take note. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. It looks very, very good, that. Uh, now then, interesting point here. Planet X was shipping bikes with the, uh, what's the word? Those like little C-clips. And it would appear that they've got the memo and everything now is a uh, very small cable tied on there for robustness so that's good 
mudguard mounts on the back. I think it's an 1142 bog standard SRAM cassette. No SRAM rival uh, gear on it. Excuse me if it's not in focus, but it's. Uh, this ain't my thing anyway. But yeah, it looks really nice. It really does look like a nice quality frame. It'll stand up to some abuse. It's got that ni nice titanium lustrous colour to it as well. I'll show you those welds better if I can. If I was watching this YouTube video, I'd be complaining. But uh, all the views that I expressed here are all my own. I know everyone's got their own different things. Uh, that's part of a lot of cycling, isn't it? That you can argue about what's better and what's not. But yes, a very impressive bike. Just going to check the build quality now, which so far again seems very good. Uh, and how it's set up if you were just buying this as a customer and you were getting it ready to ride. So let's see what that's like. So, everything's set up very well indeed. You got that classic SRAM double tap. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it does the job and it's quite positive. Uh, and I'm sure someone said something about stretch on the cable, but whatever. I know they're difficult to replace when the cables do need replacing. But uh, that's a good build quality by uh, Planet X. Brakes are set up perfectly, which is a little bit of a bugbear of mine. They're nice and even, and the tires the run very smooth. The wheels run very, very smoothly. So that is well set up. That is very well set up. Indeed. Chapeau Planet X. Now, if you'd bought this straight out of the box, so, so if you'd bought this uh, straight to, uh, to ride straight away, then uh, I think you'd be up and running very, very quickly. But what I'm going to do now with this bike is take it to bits and rebuild it to my standards with some very good quality grease, some very good quality anti seize, and every component will be checked and double checked before I ride it in the mountains and hammer the living daylights out of it 70 miles away from where I live because you've got to be able to rely on your bike. Okay, well I hope this has been some use to you in terms of looking at one and buying one. I feel the London Road has been a bit of a hidden gem and a bit of a missed opportunity because everybody raves about the Tempest. I don't dispute the Tempest is a fantastic bike but inside's large that is currently sold out on Planet X's website. Uh, and for me, the geometry wasn't a million miles off on this. If anything, it was a little bit more upright, a uh, little bit more road bike. Uh, and as I say, you know, if I'm attacking hard trails, I'm gonna be on a cross country mountain bike. Simple as that. But I hope that's of some use to you. I, hope, I wish someone had done this when I was looking to buy it. So, if the video's crap, I apologise. There ain't no like, no subscribing here because I probably won't do any more of these unless people ask for a first ride one uh, or first impressions or all that kind of stuff. But yeah, Planet X London Road Titanium Special Edition 1,399 delivered in less than 24 hours. <laughs> it's got to be the steal of the century, hasn't it? I don't see anything better than that. Thanks for watching.